let's find the derivative of this function. Observe the question. Sin x has at its power an inverse trigonometric function, which is sine inverse of x. We need to bring the sine inverse of x to the back of sin x. To solve for the derivative of this function, step number one, we are going to take the natural log of both sides. Before we do this, let's recap from basic exponential and natural log functions. The natural log of x is the same as log x of base e. Likewise, exponential can neutralize natural log to release x. And natural log can neutralize exponential to equally release x. Also, the natural log of b to the power of a is equal to a the natural log of b. This is the same as this and this is the same as this. We are going to apply this to the question. Hence, I take the natural log of both sides. To keep it simple, I can decide to let the exponential out. But because it's a natural log function, the exponential is still there. This and this are the same. Likewise, this and this are the same. Next, because of this rule, I'm going to take the sine inverse of x to the back of this natural log. That is, this is like b while this is like a. Next, at the back of the natural log, this is now multiplying everything here. Next, on this side, I will apply implicit differentiation. While on this side, I will apply product rule. Next, differentiate y. And we're going to get 1 over y. Here, we differentiated y, not x. And because of that, the consequences is that you multiply it with dy dx according to the rule of implicit differentiation. Remember that from the basic derivative table, when you differentiate the natural log of x, you are going to get 1 over x. But if you differentiate the natural log of y, you are going to get 1 over y. However, because you differentiated y, you are going to multiply it with dy dx. This is the difference between when you differentiate y and when you differentiate x. Next, we are going to apply product rule. Let's keep sine inverse of x constant. And we are going to differentiate the natural log of sine x. Differentiate sine x. When you differentiate sine x, you are going to get cos x. Next, we are going to recopy back sine x to the denominator. Recap that if y is equal to the natural log of 2s to the power of 3, then dy dx is we are going to differentiate 2x to the power of 3 and we are going to have 6x squared. Next, the 2x to the power of 3 will come back to the denominator. This happens because we differentiated the natural log of this function. That's how we obtained cos x divided by sin x. Next, for product rule, we now put a plus. Next, we are going to keep the natural log constant. We are going to differentiate the sine inverse of x. Sine inverse of x is the same as arc sine x. From the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, when you differentiate 
arcsine x, which is the same thing as sine inverse of x, you are going to get 1 divide the square root of 1 minus x squared. Hence, the derivative of sine inverse of x is this. Next, cos x divide sine x is the same thing as cot x, which is from the basic trigonometric identity functions. Next, instead of cos divided by sine x, I can now replace it with cot x. Next, I can rewrite this to look like this. Both are the same. Remember that dy dx is an entity. Likewise, this is like over 1. Hence, 1 can multiply everything here, while this denominator can multiply 1. And that's how we got this. Next, this y will move over to the other side to multiply everything here, making dy dx the subject. Here, we have made dy dx the subject. Next, we are going to replace the value of y. y is equal to sine x to the power of sine inverse of x, which was from the question. Next, instead of this, we now replace the value of our y. And this becomes our dy dx. This is calculus. These are recommended video topics in differentiation and also some suggested video topics in integration, including their applications, including precalculus video topics. To locate all these videos, follow the link on the screen. I will see you in the next video.